So the first thing you need to know is that you need to have good brushes. So that's a good brush. And that's a good brush. And this one is the rubbish brush. So it's got, it's hard and it's useless. And this is what I use to dig into the color. So I'll dig into this. And I don't really care if the bristles go. So as I put it, so I start digging to the color. So this has been moistened first few minutes before I'll spray onto it or I'll just put some water so I'll I could just dab some water like that and then let it soak and then I'll dig this rubbish brush into it so get yourself a cheap rubbish brush and then you can put the paint on the palette and that's when you're going to use the good brush so that's the first tip make sure that you have that rubbish brush because you don't want to ruin a brush like that that brush could cost thirty or forty or fifty dollars and that one would cost you three dollars or four dollars so get something that you can destroy so that you can use that to just dig into the paint and then put it on your palette so that's the first thing now the second thing is we're gonna make black um, you don't buy black you make black and you can see this maroon kind of shade here I'll give you the exact shade later because I can't remember the shade anyway but I've put in a whole amount of this maroon here and then I'm going to take now I can make black with several shades one is I can take this really green shade so that's you can't see it as green but it's a very dark green that you probably can see it now and I'm mixing it with the red and as I mix it with the red you'll notice First, it looks like, you know, it looks like black. Well, it does look like black. So there you go. That looks like black. And so I'll make black with green. I will also make black with blue. So I'll mix black, green, and blue. And you can see some blue tinges there. Now that's a different bluish kind of black. It's got the maroon and it's got the red so it's got the red and it's got some of the green and and you have to mix this a bit so that's more like a bluish black maybe even a purplish black and then I'll also want kind of like a reddish black so I've got more red and a bit of green but that has a predominance of of red in it so that'll have a predominance of red so now, why am I making these three different shades? The first is I want like a black black, then I want a reddish black, and then I want a bluish black. Because when I start to color the picture, here's what's going to happen. So here's my drawing book, and we're going to go to color this picture. And so now, here's a, here's a lamp, and I want to start off with a kind of bluish black so notice as you're looking at the shade it's not jet black it's bluish black and as I push the bead down push the bead down see that it's it's not as jet black and you can see the paper coming through now I can add in the black which was the greenish black or rather the dark black and you can see that's a different shade of black and I can mix them as they go down I might want to mop it up a bit so that we get rid of some of that blue just keep the bead going but maybe just you know put in some greenish tinges see that so as that as that is going down it's kind of got different shades so the black doesn't have to be solid black all the time and now you've got a kind of variation in the black as you go along and we'll see this with red in the next picture as well we can go back over this and you'll see how you can get a kind of variation this black so there you go that's that's your picture and notice how it's got you know that 
that starts off almost being purplish and then there's there's no real black spot here and we can do that later when this dries in the meantime let's go to the reds so again when we go back to the palette you'll notice that I've got the I've put in red here there's lots of moisture and there's orange here and there's yellow so I've pre-mixed all of that and now when I start to paint I can start off with say a yellowy shade so I'm going here and maybe I'll decide that this side of the pot has more sunlight so we'll start off with more yellow and then I'll dip into the orange and bring in a bit of orange here and then mix the red as well so as you can see I'm getting different tones but specifically just mixing some shades and of course if there's too much moisture here you want to just dab it a bit because otherwise you'll keep getting orange the whole way through especially if you want to get you know a deeper color say red so now the red really comes in see that was a bad move going back there and you can even bring in a bit of black so I could bring in some black here you know, there's no need to be scared about stuff as the pot goes down see that given a nice depth to it I'm gonna leave some space because I want some flames there and now when you look at the picture what you're looking at is the yellow the orange the red and even a bit of black I'm um, gonna dab that a bit doesn't look very black it looks brown but that's okay and that's it and so here's a little bead as well we need to mop up that was left too late but it's okay we can now go back at this picture and the, the top part is largely dry so now if I wanted to kind of glaze this picture with say a bluish tinge I can just mix something I can mix a little blue and this is how you glaze something you you kind of start on one end and then you keep going so I'm not putting any more paint I'm just dabbing the paint really I'm just getting the bead to move and I'm getting rid of the paint I'm not putting any more paint on it just it's just the moisture in the brush which is why you need to have a good brush now obviously I use blue but I could have just as easily used yellow or yellow ochre and got a completely different result and we'll go over to the other pot because that may have dried by now um, and so now what you've got is what you could call a glaze and look at this this real patch over here because we forgot to do stuff you can let the the color run and I'll just get this book straight up so now the the glaze will start to dry on this side what we are going to do is we'll just put in some yellow ochre so that's yellow ochre and see I haven't prepared anything that's not good so now I'm using my good brush to dig in which is not good let's use so I'm gone back to my crappy brush making sure I've got enough yellow ochre and now I'll put in enough moisture there not too much this one's probably too much but what I can do now is actually forget the yellow ochre we'll, we'll show you what happens when this one this is a light shade and um, let's let's put some yellow ochre here for instance so when I put in some yellow ochre here notice what's going to happen it's still a, a, a kind of glaze 
and you'll notice, and I'm going to do this carefully because the bottom is still wet, I'm going to actually go for a smaller brush. And this is why you need to have your brushes close at hand. And I'm just pushing that yellow ochre without any more liquid, but notice how that blackness has turned almost to some level of light. It's almost like there's light entering the room. We'll do more as we go along, but you can see the difference in tones here, and you can see the patchiness here from not having mopped up that bead. So that's it. So what did we cover? We went to black and we took green and mixed it with the maroon and we got a, black, uh, a greenish black and then we had a reddish black and then we had a bluish black and that's really what you want to do. You want to start mixing the colors on the palette which is why you need to have space and I did the same thing with the reds it's quite a watery wash here not necessarily the best one that I would like when we look at say some other drawings um, say, say that one you still have when you look at it closely you can see the purplish tones you can see the dark tones you can see the yellow ochre tones and that's really what's happening in the picture the reason why this doesn't look flat is because we've done one wash with all kinds of tones and then even done a glaze so this part of it has been glazed with yellow ochre. you can actually see it at the end here you can see all of this is yellow ochre and then this part has been done again with a darker shade which you can go over later once this dries up we can go back and we can improve on it fix it do whatever we want watercolor is not permanent but you don't want to have a situation like this where your watercolor looks like this. Now this is not watercolor. See this? This is just full red, full red, full red. There's no paper showing through at all. Whereas when you look on the left hand side, you can see the paper showing through in all of this. Look at this background as well. It's got tones of green and dark green and yellowy and yellow ochre. And that creates some kind of dynamism in the wash. And that's what you really want to do. So that's me, saying bye.